Last time we talked about force on uh, moving charges. This time we're going to continue with force on current carrying wires and torque on current carrying loops. Uh, we'll also, I'll also be giving you some uh, actual examples with numbers and stuff. So this one is the next one uh, we're going to see. The, the previous week we saw F equals Q V crossed into B. And uh, we said that if a charge is moving, uh, there's a, a force on it. And then the force due to the magnetic field on the current carrying wire is IL crossed into B. This one really is not necessarily a new, completely new equation. It's just this one. Uh, uh, if you take this one, you can derive that one because um, if you really think about it, the charge per, um, let's see here, velocity, if instead of a single charge moving um, at the velocity v, you have a bunch of charges. So let's say, for example, you have uh, some wire like this, and you have a battery attached to it. Okay, So the battery is causing current to flow through here. And there is an external magnetic field in this, in this region. Let's say the external magnetic field is uh, out of the board. So instead of a single charge that's moving to the right, you have a bunch of charges, the current well, with the current uh, I. So if I want to derive this equation, I simply just say, OK, the, uh, remember the definition of current was dq dt. Or you can simply write it as Q over T. The, the current is the derivative of the, uh, the charge flow. Or if the, uh, the rate of charge flow is constant, then the current is just simply how much charge has flown per unit time. The total charge flow divided by the unit time. So if I want to write this as, if I, I could write the Q as uh, I times T. OK, so I have uh, F equals IT. So I'm showing you the derivation of the IL cross into B formula. And then you can take the T inside of the vector, multiply it by the V. And then TV is the length of the wire, because that's the velocity that the particles are traveling at. OK, times the time, the unit of time that they're traveling through the wire. Well, velocity times time is distance, so that's the length of the wire. You see, so now the, all it is, all this is, is just, uh, uh, just another form of this one. So in this case, what's the direction of the force on the wire going to be? OK, so again, the right hand rule, I crossed into B, the force is going to be down, OK? The only difference between uh, the two, between the, the, ch the single charge and between the wire, is that the wire is not going to go in a circle, OK? If it was a single charge going to the right, and the magnetic field was out of the board, right, the force would be down again. And it would cause the charge to start moving like this. By the time the charge got over here, the force would be this way. And so as we saw the other day, the charge is going to go in a circle of a certain radius. But the wire is not going to go in a circle because the wire is more, more, uh, more likely it's basically uh, attached to the sides right here, right? That the sides are not free to move. So the only difference is what happens to the wire is uh, if the sides are rigid, then the wire just basically bends a little bit like this. The force causes the wire to bend down a little bit. And that's about it, right? It doesn't go in a circle. OK? OK, now uh, as far as that, let's now do a couple examples. We'll do one to illustrate uh, uh, this one, and then we'll do one to illustrate the other, uh, the QV crossed into B. Uh, 